Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm going to do a review and unboxing of the OnMote security system. So as of the time of this review, it retails for $400. This is a four camera, eight channel system, meaning I can eventually upgrade to eight cameras. Uh, so I'll cut right to the point. This was sent to me for review by OnMote, so thank you to them for that. They didn't ask me to provide them any feedback or um, condition the review at all. I kind of just film it, release the review, and then send it to them when I'm done. So the reason why I'm filming this is because I've, if you're familiar with my channel, I don't usually do too many surveillance systems or that side of tech, um, even though I use it a lot. I've typically always just reviewed uh, Lorex and uh, I like Lorex because it's been a trusted brand. They obviously cost a little bit more money, but I wanted to see, I finally decided, you know what, let's see what some more affordable competitors offer. So I'm gonna base my review off my prior experiences with Lorex and then based off this price point and overall experience to help you decide if it's worth either spending more for the bigger name brands or if something like this from Amazon will give you enough of what you're looking for, if not more, who knows? So let's start with the unboxing. We'll see what we get in the box. Now this was shipped to me inside another brown box. So in case that matters to you and how stuff is packaged, uh, this came with a little bit extra protection. So let's open this up and see what we get inside. I'm using a wide angle camera. So some of these things when they come in and out might look kind of funny. <laughs> so um, let's see, we have obviously the quick user guide, which is still a book. So that might actually be the full manual. Now this is a PoE system with an NVR. And what that means is power over ethernet. So instead of your standard coaxial plus power setups that a lot of older DVR based surveillance systems ship with, this uses ethernet. Um, it's where everything is going, you typically get really high quality that's why you see the 2k through 4k and higher um, these are 60 feet now some systems ship up to 100 feet so just keep that in mind if 60 is going to be long enough um, what i do with my house i pre-wired for ethernet uh, different surveillance points throughout the home so i'm not going to be using these at all so factor that in too if you don't need to pay for the extra cabling you know you could save some there but so you get four of these because my system came with four cameras. This unboxing is not gonna take too long because it's pretty straightforward. This says accessories, so let's go, let's go with this first. Now this isn't scripted, so I don't know what's gonna be in here. So you have a mouse, which is good. This is very similar. It looks almost identical in size, cable length, and everything to the Lorex system I've reviewed. You have a short ethernet cable. So this ethernet cable is gonna connect the recorder box, the NVR network video recorder to your home network. That's important if you ever wanna view what the cameras are doing within your home or use the app on the phone. You get this fairly, this is a large power supply. Um, so because this has what's called power over ethernet, this ethernet cord is carrying the data plus the video signal. So this power supply is actually powering the box and all the cameras connected to it, which is why you typically get something larger or, and more robust like this. You may even have a larger one if you're looking at the Onwelt 16 camera systems or 16 channel, because that box has to power even more. This is your standard power cord, three pin ground, um, really heavy duty. So cables look fine, mouse pretty straightforward, 60 foot ethernet as labeled. So we got that out of the way. Now, my system has four identical cameras, so I'm only gonna unbox one. There are, I guess there's a few different types of cameras and Onmoat sells a lot of different types. Um, some of it comes down to how you wanna mount it, what you want it to look like, and if you need certain functionality like zoom, pan tilt, things like that. Now these are not motorized, so the way this works, this was packaged with that on top, it made it hard to get out. Um, you get some drywall anchors. These are pretty straightforward, relatively inexpensive anchors. I usually never use drywall anchors and mounting hardware from what comes in the box. This looks like it'll work fine if you trust just drilling a hole, tapping in the anchor. Um, this looks like for your a cable grommet for waterproofing because these are outdoor and the camera itself. So what I was getting at earlier, these are they basically are designed to mount like this. Now mine aren't motorized. So once you decide where you wanna mount it, you're doing all the adjustment manually and then it's going to stay that way. They do have more expensive cameras out there where you can control it through a motor and uh, basically through the app on the computer or phone, 
change the location of the camera in case you want pan and tilt. Um, there are also ones that have a optical zoom. So there's actually a mechanical zoom inside in case you want to start from a wide angle and get really, really close up to something. Those types of systems are better for, um, you know, typically to me in a business environment or if you're having someone constantly monitoring it. Um, on my situation for what I do with a home, I don't, I'm not going to be messing with that. I just want fixed wide angle cameras. And I like the way these look. And this is metal, uh, which is huge. I actually expected this to be plastic. So just to throw that out there right off the bat, my Lorex cameras, all the ones I reviewed in the past, they had a plastic exterior. They had some form of metal for the mounting mechanism on the post, but it's pretty much all plastic. This feels incredibly robust. So that was a nice unexpected surprise. This is basically what you're mounting and then you're gonna lock this in place. I'm gonna go through a, a mounting process on video. I'll show you how to do it. Um, but you can still wall mount these. So you can wall mount it like this and then change the camera so you still get the orientation you want. Or if you're mounting this under an eaves of a home or in a ceiling, like an outdoor, uh, a, a garage, for example, you mount it to the ceiling of a garage, you can have the camera angled down. So it's a versatile uh, setup uh, and it looks like, yeah. So if you're wall mounting it, you can basically point it. Uh, straight, which is awesome. This is really nice. The cable's thick. You have your uh, fallback. So this cable, just to show you while I unbox it, this is a barrel connector for additional power. So if you don't have the ability to run power over ethernet for some reason, this system will do it. But if you connected this camera to a system that didn't, this will still be used for data in the video signal. And then you can actually feed it its own separate power source to power the camera as well. So it's a little flexible. I like Ethernet because it's clean. There's no signal issues. Um, it's not analog, it's purely digital. So you're not gonna have to worry about uh, interference or dropouts that you get with some of the older coaxial systems, which can work extremely well. I'm not faulting it, but um, I, I like the way Ethernet works. Naturally being a geek, power over Ethernet is better for me. So no fancy packaging on the NVR. Um, again, comparing it to my prior unboxing experience, the Lorex stuff um, typically all ships in individual boxes. It's not gonna make a difference as long as it's protected. Um, this is probably a less wasteful way of doing things. Uh, this is fairly light, so it makes me think that they're using a laptop hard drive, um, but this could just be very light and all hard drive, but I'm assuming it's a hard uh, laptop drive. So I'm actually going to crack the shell and see what it looks like. There is one little sticker here. So, um, you know, we'll see what it, how it's laid out. Either way, that's the unboxing. That's what you get. And uh, once I crack this, we'll see what it looks like inside and then we'll start installing it. All right, so let's crack the shell. See what this looks like inside. I'm assuming it's just these two screws and I slide it back. So we'll see. Uh, it's kind of nice though. They have a, a support sticker on the top of the unit. So if you ever have issues, they give you their 800 number. It says 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. Pacific time. 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. Pacific time. So basically, they don't have U.S. hours. I'm assuming that's real. They do have email. So if you expect phone support during the day on a Monday through Friday, I would not. Oh, there are side screws too, so I was wrong. Interestingly, there are a couple rack mount screw holes or there's tiny screws on the side. I don't know if they sell a rack mount kit online. I didn't see that. Um, but if you're putting this in a network rack, I am putting mine in, in a network rack. I'll show you that on the video soon. Um, but that will be more, I bought a shelf. So it's just gonna rest on a small one U shelf. Uh, I like having it all there because that's where all my ethernet cable comes in from the exterior of the house. So it makes it nice and clean. Okay. Moment of truth. It is, it is a 3.5 inch drive. So this is pretty much a very straightforward board. So it's using a SATA Toshiba drive, which is fine. It is a two terabyte, I assume. Yeah, it's a two terabyte drive. So this is huge. Um, 3.5 inch drives are more reliable. My first Lorex system I reviewed was a 3.5. The second Lorex system I reviewed, which was a wireless system, that was a 2.5 inch drive. These typically perform better, not only from a speed standpoint, so if you're scrubbing video and watching multiple streams at once, but they're also more reliable. So if this ever fails, this is not proprietary. You can literally buy any hard drive you want that's a 3.5 SATA. I would recommend one's designed for surveillance. Um, both Seagate and Western Digital 
make ones for that. Um, the reason why is because the drive is basically being written to and erased all the time. So when you have a drive designed for that, uh, not only from a power consumption standpoint, but from a reliability and performance standpoint, that's the way to go. You pay a little bit more, but it's a better drive. I'm gonna go ahead with setting this all up now. We're gonna install some cameras to the exterior of the home. I'm gonna use it for a while and then uh, show you how it looks inside the network rack and then give you some final thoughts. We'll also discuss how the app works and how to set this up so you can use it in your home. Okay, as far as the initial connection goes for the NVR, it's actually quite simple. Um, the most complicated part of the installation is gonna come down to where you're putting the cameras and how you're getting ethernet from the cameras to the box. So while I can't tell you how to cut holes in your wall, there's plenty of YouTube videos for that. We're gonna start with the basics of connecting the NVR. So on the back of the unit, now I did this on the unboxing, but these jacks right here are your PoE outputs because this box supports up to eight cameras. You have your ethernet. This is going to be what you feed the internet connection to, which I'll show you in a moment. Two USB ports, audio out, HDMI, VGA, and power. So you don't have to use all of these ports. They give you a couple options. I'm set up to use HDMI. Now you want to, even though this does work with an app and you can set it up with the app, I am also, I always like to have a monitor connected to the NVR because it's a really quick, it can always be on if someone's at the door, you can look at the screen type thing. Uh, so I have all that pre-wired. So there's a couple things you wanna do for testing as well. Now, as I start connecting this, I'm gonna do the HDMI and you really wanna do your power last. It's just a good rule of thumb. I'm gonna run my USB cable for the mouse, uh, which was included as you saw in the unboxing. This is the included ethernet cable. I'm using that to connect to my uh, router here. And then obviously we have power. Now, once I connect power, it's gonna turn on, of course. So there's the beep for that. I'm gonna let it boot up and I'm gonna very carefully move it. And you can see that the screen is already working. So it boots up in a minute. Now, the reason why you wanna be careful moving it once it's plugged in is there's a hard drive inside. It's a uh, spinning disc, just like a computer. So you don't wanna bump and shake it around. You can damage the hard drive. So I wanna point that out. Now there's a couple more tips I wanna say. So I pre-wired my house. I knew I was doing surveillance. I had done it in the past if you saw my Lorex videos. So I have all my drops right here ready to go with the NVR, which is connected to my router and switch. Uh, so just to talk about the gear real quick, this is not a rack mountable unit out of the box. So I just bought a 1U shelf. So if you're doing something sim similar to this, instead of worrying about rack mounting it, it's so small and light that just get a 1U shelf. Now the height is uh, slightly taller than a 1U. So plan for 2U, you can get a 2U shelf, but you don't need the strength from it. And that basically is the shelf size. The 1U, 2U is how high it is. So it's just resting there. And then all my cables are in the back and it'll look nice and clean uh, once it's done. The uh, I'll have links in the description if you're curious about what type of gear this was um, and what I'm using. This is just a trip light network case. And the other thing I wanna to mention too, this does support audio recording, which is why I like using HDMI because it'll pass audio. You don't need to buy an expensive um, TV or monitor to take a look at this, especially with the Black Friday deals coming up soon or just sales in general on screens. A inexpensive 1080p, let's say 20 to 24 inch monitor, they can be anywhere from 80 to $120. That's all you need, 1080p, 60 Hertz, and it'll work perfectly fine. Now, the other thing you wanna test, this is going into my next phase of the install where I'm actually gonna go outside and start mounting the cameras, is you want to plug in the ethernet cable to the camera. This is just a short cable I had. Connect it to your NVR, the Onwoke NVR, to make sure you can see a picture on the screen. Because if for some reason you can't, then there may be an issue with the camera or the NVR or your cables, whatever it may be. So do this troubleshooting first because you don't wanna go through all the work of cutting holes in your wall and or installing things and then find out it's not working because then you have no idea what to troubleshoot. Did the wire get pinched? Is there something wrong with the camera, et cetera? So this is a good troubleshooting step. Always test everything first. Now, the other reason why you'd wanna do this is once I get a camera working, I am going to log into the app to see on my phone what the camera looks like because once I'm outside and I'm adjusting my camera angle, I can then use the app to preview what it looks like and I'm not walking back and forth in and out of my home to make my adjustments you know, bit by bit. 
So let's do the test now. We'll see how the camera looks. So I connected it now. I'm just waiting for the camera to go online. With any PoE camera, it's going to take a little bit to do the setup, the detection, and get everything going. So I'm going to wait until it shows up here. Hopefully it's not too long. But keep that in mind too. Don't just plug it in and assume that the camera's going to work right away. It will take a minute or so. There's the light. Certainly it has a security light, which is awesome. Uh, that deterrence light is going to be used at night. So if you have motion detection set to the correct time setting, if you will, when it's in the evening, that will act as a deterrent. It helps with the camera capturing better picture, but it's also going to let people know that a camera is watching them. So the light is a good sign. And look at that. It's coming online now. There we go. So it has, I mean, the camera's upside down. I can fix that. Um, it's a very little delay, which is great. So I can move this. It's, it's literally seems about a half a second delay, maybe at top uh, tops. So uh, that about covers. I've done the testing. I know this camera works. So I'm going to get the app set up so I know I can see the camera. Then I'll test all of the other cameras in the box, get outside, and I'll show you how to mount one. And we'll go from there. The other thing I want to point out that's super cool and I've never seen on a PoE camera is the Ethernet cable. The one that's built into the camera actually has a green status light to show that it's submitting data or transmitting data. That's awesome because if you just want the basic form of troubleshooting, if you're out there and you're mounting your camera and you plug it in and you see the green light, that's great because now you know the cable's actually working. So that can actually help significantly with troubleshooting later. Uh, so I just want to point that out, something to check out, because if, if it doesn't light up, you wouldn't have known that was an option. Now I'm getting ready to mount the camera, but I did want to prep my plate. And what I mean by that is you don't just take the wire coming out of the pre-wire plate and then screw it in and clamp it down, because one, you're not going to get a great seal on the bottom because now the wire is making it stick up, and you're putting a lot of stress and unnecessary wear on the Ethernet cable. So I created a little notch, uh, a Dremel is fine, obviously use safety glasses, and then I used a sanding wheel to kind of deburr the edge because you don't want a sharp edge either. You don't want the metal plate to pierce the cable. So I measured things out. I got everything cleaned up and ready to go. I'm going to start snaking the wire through and then we'll power on the camera and see how it looks. All right, so I have it all mounted now. I saw it light up while I was uh, screwing in the plate, so I knew it had power. Uh, and then I'm checking on the app and everything looks great. So I'm happy with the angle. This isn't gonna go anywhere thanks to the design of the mounting system. It's not like the camera weight is resting on a hinge and it's gonna sag over time. It takes a little bit of force, so there's nothing to adjust or deal with at this point. I'm all set and ready to go. So now that I have the camera installed, there's just a few quick things I wanna point out. One is the viewing angle. So the camera is mounted on the same wall as the door that you can also see on the app. So you're getting the edge of the door. So I get a very wide angle of view, which is great for an area like this. The latency is also fairly short as well. So as you can tell, as I'm moving around, if you compare my movement to the camera, I do have these synced. Um, you're seeing that the camera itself is slightly ahead, but the surveillance camera is about a half a second to a second behind. That's normal because this is connected to the NVR back in my closet and then I'm broadcasting that signal out after processing that signal wirelessly to my phone. So the latency is actually really nice, which is important because if you hear something outside, you wanna see what's actually happening at the time it's happening and not a few seconds behind. That can make a big difference. So, um, and then the last thing I wanna point out, as I move around, it does highlight me. So it's not consistent, but there is a red box being put around me as I'm moving. And what that does is it's the camera basically saying that there is a person detected. There are object detections. Now, I have to be fair, this is a fairly affordable unit, so I don't expect this to work perfectly. I'll test that more later, but I did want to point that out. And then the only other thing I want to point out is the color accuracy is slightly off. It's a little bit towards the green side. Pretty normal for surveillance cameras. They either go green or typically make everything look slightly pink. Overall, it's really good. You can see the blue vase actually pops really well from that camera. So I'm really happy with the picture quality, the angle, the speed of it. And it's actually really smooth when I move around as well. It's not jittery or stuttery. So I'm getting a higher frame rate, typically 30 frames a second, which is great. So now that that's being covered, I'm going to go install the rest of the cameras. We'll get it all synced up to the app, go over the app and setting everything up and wrap up from there. 
All right, so there's two ways to interact with the Envoit NVR for both setup and monitoring. One is through the HDMI cable connected to a monitor um, and then use the included mouse. So this is what we're doing first. And you can see that I have all four cameras connected and I'm able to you know, mouse over and click each individual wheel. I can turn audio on. So if my monitor has uh, speakers built in, I can hear what the camera is hearing. I can force a local recording to uh, basically create my own separate file. Uh, instant playback will go backwards in time in case something just happened and I wanted to see it. And I can even zoom in. So if I open, uh, so let's go to double clicking this and then I will click on this little digital zoom right here. It's like a plus sign with a magnifying glass and I can basically draw a box to where I want to zoom in. So, I mean, obviously this is a little compressed because I've zoomed in a lot and I can use the mouse scroll wheel to scroll back out. So it's pretty cool that they give you this level of control and honestly it's pretty intuitive, it's easy to use. And I right click again to go back. Now if I go to the bottom of the screen, you can see the home, you can see the view. So multi-window, I have it set to four windows because I have four cameras. The default when I first turned this on was nine. So if I go to nine here, you could see the rest of it's fairly useless uh, space. So I just right clicked when I was in this window, I went to four windows and I'm back and good to go. Now, if I go to the actual menu, I don't want to go through every single step. I just want to show you some of the basics. So if I click menu, I'm going to swipe uh, my pattern that I created here. Now I can see all four cameras connected, what the local IP address of the cameras are, because this is a private uh, subnet that the NVR is creating. Basically, it's a separate network for just my cameras outside of my home network. If I go to advanced, I can uh, do the firmware checks, updates, uh, things like that. Encoding is going to be a real quick thing to check. So my default level was uh, a bit lower. Now, if you want higher resolution, higher quality, and I go to driveway, you can see that on the bit rate, it's actually set to 6,000 now. Basically, if you zoom in or you go to local playback later, having a higher bit rate means the picture will be less blocky. It'll take up more space. So you can hold only so many extra days of storage of recording time for the included uh, NVR. However, to me, I'd rather have the actual detail. Now you can also set the frame rates and bring it up to 30. I recommend 25 or 30 because sometimes having too slow of a frame rate, you might miss a key detail or something that happened. So um, there's enough storage in here where as long as I have at least 10 days of recording time, I don't mind that you know I'm using a higher quality picture. So H65 is what you want to use now because it's going to give you higher quality picture at a smaller file size. So, and then you can do what's called a substream. So if you want a lower quality secondary video, you can have a substream set at a lower bit rate in case you need to send the file out quickly. And then you can also have it so it includes audio. So you can set this per zone. Uh, once you've done all of the cameras, then they all have the settings that you like and you can move on. You shouldn't have to touch this ever again. Now, if I click OSD on the left, I can rename my cameras here, which is an easy first way to do it. And then later on, I can do that in the app as well. If you rename it here, it will also automatically show up in the app with the correct name. There's a different, you know, settings you can make as far as image quality goes in case the lighting makes the picture hard to see. But I found that the default settings worked fine. Even in night vision, I didn't have to do anything. Now under system and preview, I can actually set the, the layout, basically the view that I am seeing everything at and even control the output quality to the monitor and connect it to. It does say it goes up to t uh, 4K at 30 Hertz. So if you want the higher resolution, you could do that and it should look more clear. I only have a 1080p monitor here and it looks totally fine for, you know, what these cameras can do. The other thing I want to show you is if you go into alarm, so it's not just alarm systems, it's also the motion detection. So here is where I can basically draw and disable zones uh, for motion detection. So if I'm doing something like this, now this area won't trigger any motion detection alert and drawing again will re-enable that scene. So let's activate this whole thing because the front should only go off if someone's actually there. This is a low noise area. Conversely, if I go to my driveway, I would want to basically ignore the sidewalk and the road. Otherwise I'll be getting motion detection alerts every single time something's there. If you don't like what you did, let's say I drew this and it's all kind of a mess, I can actually click full screen and it'll re-highlight all of it. And then if I didn't want it all collect, uh, selected, I can hit clear all and then draw only the area that I care about. So it's actually a really easy to use interface. It doesn't look state of the art, but honestly, this looks better than the Lorex system I've used in the past 
and even without reading the manual, it was very easy to set up. Now back on the home screen here, if I just right click and hit playback, I'm gonna go because I wanna basically watch history. And you can see all these little colors here. I can zoom in and out by using the magnifying glass. I can start clipping and basically make my own clip. So you can see right here, there's a little slider. And as I go down to one hour, um, I can go back in time very easily. So this is basically 1230 in the morning on the prior night. So if there was any action and I saw the red dot, I can easily go to that. Let's expand just a little bit further. It's a lot busy during the day when all the stuff is moving around. Um, so if you have plants that are blowing in the wind, you may want to ignore certain, you know, leafy areas. And then if I want to switch zones, all I have to do is select what zone I want to go to. Uh, you're going to see a black screen here because I didn't hit play yet. So let me go disable this. We'll go to just the front corner of the home. So I'm going to check that box on the left and then I'm going to hit play. And now I am watching uh, back on that box again. And if I go back to the front door, let's just go back to keep it full screen here. I can hit play. And now I'm at my front door in the middle of the night. And this is also a great way to show you how well the night vision works. Um, whether it's pitch black like the other camera or if there's some lighting here, it's still very easy to see. And you have a clean timestamp and date as well. All right, yes, I'm wearing another shirt yet again. I've been using this system for a while and kind of filming as I go, but we're gonna end on this part of the video. So I'm just gonna show you the app real quick. And now that it's all set up, it should be relatively straightforward. So here's my front door. When I first open the app, I'm in single camera view. And all I have to do is tap it to uh, basically show the on-screen menu options. And on the left-hand side, you can see a little one. So if I tap that one and then I go to four, it's now changing to my four camera view. So now I can see all four zones at once. And if I only care about one, I'm just gonna double tap back to camera one. Now on the right-hand side, you can see it says HD. I can change the clarity basically for what I'm viewing on my phone. So if you're having trouble seeing the video and you're remote, let's say you're relying off your cell phone internet because you're several miles from the home, you can switch to SD or a lower quality picture and that will give you a better chance of buffering the video instead of waiting for your phone to catch up. You know, so depending on your reception. So you can pinch to zoom. Uh, so to me, I would just use controls like that. There are other things you can do as far as turning on the sound that you can see on the right hand side. You'll also see a camera to take a photo. Now it says uh, snapshot saved successfully. And I can hit the record button as well in case I want to start recording whatever it is that I'm seeing to create a separate file. You can see the little settings on the top right hand side. So if I want to change the camera, uh, picture quality settings, I can change brightness, contrast. There's so much you can do in the app and honestly, it's really intuitive and easy to use. If I go on the left-hand side, these three little bars in the top left corner, I'm expanding my side menu here and I'm in live view. I can go to playback, which again, just like the NVR, now I can look at historical viewing of all of the zones and I can hear it doesn't show anything yet because I haven't chosen a zone. So I'm gonna go to one camera, click my devices, Let's go to the front corner of the home. Let's go to, let, let's just go to the 20th and I'll click OK. And now I'm on the 20th during the day and that's what it looks like. And I can see my motion detection events at the bottom. I can change the playback speed. Again, I can record video, take snapshots, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see how easy this is to use. Now, if I go back to live view again and I go to the camera uh, icon on the top, um, basically it's that little icon. Let's go back one more so I can describe it. So it looks like a screen with a little dot on it on the corner. If I tap that, this is where I can set more specific settings to just this camera, whether it's image, the audio, I can change the device name right here. So this one says front door, general detection. This is where you're going to create all of your uh, motion detection stuff. So if I click motion detection here, now I know that it's enabled detection area. I can tap that to then see a preview of the screen. And on my phone, I can draw the motion detection, highlight, clear, et cetera. So let's go to edit and I'm gonna erase certain areas. So you can see on the right-hand side, the eraser is highlighted and I'm getting rid of a zone. If I wanna add it again, I'll go back to the pencil and I'll redraw it. And now I know my entire zone is set up. And that's it. The, the primary thing you would connect to on the app is just for naming your cameras, the zones, making sure you're positioning it correctly, set your motion detection events, etc. Uh, very, very easy to use both on the viewing and the playback. 
So that about wraps up this Onwot uh, security camera review. I, I'm not gonna lie, I was apprehensive about reviewing this. I've typically only reviewed Lorex in the past. It's an American brand, they've been around for a long time. They're a little bit more expensive. And the UI on Lorex, it, it's still pretty old. I just kind of trusted the hardware. So um, I wanted to try something different. Uh, this actually had some decent reviews. Onmote has had a few systems before that were rated well. So I'm like, okay, let's try a budget system and see how it stacks up. I was really impressed because the app actually worked better for me than my Lorex system did. It, was, it seemed a little bit more fresh and easy to use. As you saw in that recording, I did that in one take with no real edits or like, oh, let me do that whole thing over. Um, without studying ahead of time, I just used it. So it's been easy to use, the picture quality is great. I wish in a certain extent the field of view was a little bit wider depending on your area. Um, they make wider field of view cameras, but this system is at, I believe it's 110 degrees. So just make sure that it's giving you the field of view that you're looking for. There are several different versions and configurations you can get from Onwoat. This system retails for only $400. And at the time of this review, there's a coupon thing to click on to get you $50 off. So to get four really high quality cameras, an NVR with two terabytes of storage and all the stuff you need to set it up is actually a pretty good deal. And now I feel more secure if I leave my home because it's the holidays and if packages get delivered or something sitting out my door, especially what I do for you know my YouTube channel, a lot of stuff gets delivered here. And I feel better knowing I have a reliable so far camera system to keep an eye out for it. So. Um, I know this isn't what I normally review. This is um, a camera system and I typically do audio and gaming and other cool tech, uh, but we all live somewhere and in a lot of cases, a surveillance or camera system can be beneficial. So I'm still a nerd, I'm a geek at heart and I love hardware and I wanted to cover something a little bit different because I think this is applicable to a lot of people out there. So anyway, I hope you found the review helpful. I have uh, links in the description below to help you purchase any of these if you find that this is the right system for you. With that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.